Repaid rent is one of those financial concepts that sounds simple on the surface, but can get pretty complex once you start digging into it. It's something that both businesses and individuals encounter when they lease or rent property. Basically, prepaid rent is when you pay your rent in advance for a specific period or even for the entire lease term. Now, you might be wondering, is prepaid rent actually an asset? Well, let's break it down together. First, let's get on the same page about what prepaid rent really is. Imagine you're moving into a new apartment and the landlord says, hey, if you pay me the first three months of rent upfront, I'll give you a better deal. So you hand over that cash and now you've got three months of rent covered before you even step foot inside. That's prepaid rent in action. It's an advance payment that you make to the landlord and it's usually a requirement in the lease agreement. But why do landlords ask for this? Well, it provides them with financial security. By requiring tenants to pay in advance, they ensure they'll receive rental income even if the tenant decides to bail or stops paying. It's like a safety net for them. On the flip side, it can also be a good thing for tenants. Knowing that you've already paid for the next few months can help you budget your expenses and give you a sense of stability. Now, let's dive into the big question, is prepaid rent an asset? To answer this, we need to understand what an asset really is. An asset is something that has economic value and is expected to provide future benefits. So, when you pay that prepaid rent, you're essentially buying the right to occupy that property for a set period. It does have economic value, right? It represents a payment made in advance for using a property, and you can expect future benefits from it, like a roof over your head. But here's where it gets a bit tricky. Whether we classify prepaid rent as a current or long-term asset depends on the length of the lease. If your lease is less than a year, then we're looking at it as a current asset because you'll use it up or convert it into cash within that time frame. But if you've signed a lease for more than a year, it becomes a long-term asset because you're expecting benefits from it for a longer period. Now that we've established that prepaid rent can be considered an asset, let's talk about how to account for it. When you pay your prepaid rent, you record it as an asset on your balance sheet. Initially, it's recognized when you make that payment. So, let's say you pay $3,000 for three months of prepaid rent. You would increase your prepaid rent asset account by that amount and decrease your cash account by the same amount. It's a straightforward transaction. As time goes on and you occupy the property, you'll start to expense that prepaid rent. Each month, as you use up that prepaid rent, you decrease the prepaid rent asset account and increase your rent expense account. So, at the end of the month, if you've used one-third of that prepaid rent, you'll make an adjustment to reflect that. By the end of your lease term, ideally, your prepaid rent asset account should have a zero balance because you've applied all of it to your rent expenses. Now, there's something important to note here. Prepaid rent is not considered revenue or income for the landlord. It's simply a payment made in advance for using the property. And for you, as the tenant, it's not considered an expense until the rental period actually occurs. Let's talk about the potential implications of considering prepaid rent as an asset. On the positive side, having prepaid rent on your balance sheet can improve your liquidity position. If you're in a tight spot financially, that prepaid rent can be converted into cash if needed. It's like having a little cushion to fall back on. Additionally, it can enhance your creditworthiness. Lenders might see that prepaid rent as an asset, which could help you secure financing when you need it. But it's not all sunshine and rainbows. There are downsides to consider, too. If a company has a large amount of prepaid rent, it can give the misleading impression that they're in a better financial position than they actually are. Investors and stakeholders might not see the whole picture if they're only looking at the balance sheet. Plus, if prepaid rent isn't accurately accounted for or is misused, it can lead to financial reporting errors or even fraud. That's why having robust accounting procedures is crucial. Now, let's touch on some common accounting issues related to prepaid rent. First up is proper classification. Prepaid rent should be recorded as an asset on the balance sheet, and getting that classification right is vital to prevent misstating your financial position. Then there's amortization. You need to amortize that prepaid rent over the period it covers. The common method is the straight line method, where you evenly distribute the prepaid rent expense over the rental period. Tracking and making adjustments can also be challenging. As you expense the prepaid rent over time, you need to keep an eye on the remaining balance and make sure your records reflect that accurately. And if circumstances change, like if you can't use the rental space as intended, you might need to write down the prepaid rent to reflect its impaired value. That's a whole other layer of complexity. What about lease modifications? If you change the terms of your lease, whether it's extending it or terminating it early, you'll need to adjust your prepaid rent balance and the related amortization schedule. That's just another reason why keeping good records is so important. When it comes to financial reporting, and disclosures, you've got to make sure you're accurately reporting your prepaid rent balances in your financial statements. This means providing sufficient disclosures as required by accounting standards like IFRS or GAAP. 
and let's not forget about tax implications. Repaid rent can have different tax treatments, so it's wise to consult with a tax advisor to ensure you're compliant with regulations. So, how can organizations ensure they account for prepaid rent correctly? It starts with setting up the appropriate accounts. You'll want a separate account for prepaid rent in your general ledger to keep things organized. When you make that initial payment, record the transaction by debiting the prepaid rent account and crediting your cash or bank account. Next, determine your amortization schedule. Divide the total prepaid rent by the number of months it covers. For example, if you pay $12,000 for a one-year lease, that's $1,000 a month in rent expense. Record that monthly rent expense at the end of each month, debiting the rent expense account and crediting the prepaid rent account. And don't forget to monitor and adjust your records regularly. Review and reconcile your prepaid rent account to ensure accuracy. Financial reporting is key, so make sure you include the prepaid rent balance and related expenses in your financial statements. And, of course, keep those tax compliance checks in mind. In conclusion, prepaid rent can indeed be considered an asset if it meets the definition of an asset and is expected to provide future benefits. Whether it's classified as a current or long-term asset depends on the length of the lease term. It's recorded as an asset on the balance sheet, and as the rental period occurs, you'll adjust your accounts accordingly. While prepaid rent can have its benefits, like improving liquidity and creditworthiness, it's essential to be aware of the potential downsides, too. Proper accounting procedures and controls are necessary to ensure that prepaid rent is recorded accurately and not misused. So, the next time you're faced with a prepaid rent situation, you'll know exactly what to consider and how to navigate it.